Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and we're going to start episode 3 of Dungeon Alliance. Now I made a couple big errors in the last playthrough and I want to correct them, at least what I can, right? And I want to let you guys know, I have now made subtitles in my previous videos for the errors, but if you haven't, if you already watched them and I hadn't had them up yet, I want you to know about them now. The first and the biggest thing that I made an error on is the quest. When you trigger a quest, you have to put it in a room that there are no heroes in it. Well, I put it in this room. Remember where I had my heroes and I automatically solved it? Yeah, I can't do that. So I should have put that quest token in one of the rooms. And these rooms were still here when I had uh, resolved that quest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my guild meeting quest token right here. Because also the zombies would have been over here. And so we couldn't have put it in those locations. It has to be in an empty spot. So this means I need to get two of my heroes into here at least that have three of the same class icon so I can complete that quest. I also am going to lose five XP that I had. And can you believe I actually had five XP? And I still have two left over. That's how much XP I got last round. So I'll put those five XP back up. And that also means we're only going to have level two upgrade cards, not level three. The second thing I've been doing wrong is the locked door mechanic. I've been doing it the right way, but you can't unlock a locked door when there's enemies in your current room. So like Melinda unlocked this door when there was a goblin here. Yeah, you, you can't do that. But I don't know how to undo it and make it all, so I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> but going forward and when you play, just know you can't unlock a locked door or a secret door when there's enemies in your current room. You can, however, open a regular door. If it's not locked, you can do that when enemies are in there. The third thing is I played the pet first for Melinda last time and then moved. Just can't do that. I got to do movement first and then all attack, including my pets. So and it's, that's important to know because I've got a lot of pets now and I'm going to even get another one, hopefully. So, yeah, you got to do your pet activation after your movement or if you're not going to move, you can do it before your two attacks. And finally, with Sonia, when she attacked, I thought there was two separate attacks, and so each time I'd have to boost it for her attacks. That's not right. When you play a card that boosts an attack, as long as it's not a spell, it works for the entire round. So that would mean that I, when I attacked twice with Sonia, I didn't need to spend those two additional cards to get plus one to take out the other zombie. I would have already had a plus one for my total attack, so I would have had four attack both times. Definitely not going to try and change that, but that's just good to know. Any buff you give, it's good for the rest of the round, except for if it's a spell. Okay, that is enough talking. Let's jump into part three. I've decided that Melinda must be a really quick gnome because she always likes to go first. So <laughs> I think we're going to activate her first. Let's take that hero activation token off her card. First thing we're going to do is play Animal Instincts. This is going to give us plus two movement, so we have a total of six movement, and we get to draw two cards. So we're drawing Kaith, sweet, and we have Scorn. Okay. Then what we're going to do is play Scorn and Trickster face down to add plus one to our movement. So we have a total of seven movement. We're going to use our Potion of Healing, and we're going to heal both of our Poison Wounds. We have to use two movement to do so. So we went from seven to five movement. Now we're going to play Eagle's Sight. So we're going to go and spend another movement. So we had five. Now we're going back down to four. And this is going to give us a plus one to our range attack. And all enemies that the target attacks have minus two for defense. Either type. Sweet! Remember, we want to get into this room with the guild meeting so that we can complete that quest and get that 5 XP back. So what we're going to do with Melinda is spend two movement to go here and two more movement to jump into this room. We're going to turn this way. We want to be in this room because now we have two primordial uh, icons in here. Now all we need to do is get Sonia or Root in there and we've completed that quest. Now we're going to six Sparky on that zombie. Sparky has four attack. And the adjacent zombie, that's the whole reason why I, would, I wanted to attack the adjacent zombie, has three and one defense, four. See ya. That will get us one XP. Now, since we have eliminated the adjacent zombie, Melinda can attack at range this zombie. And she has plus one to her attack and eliminates up to two defense. So that will take care of this zombie as well. Sweet, that's another XP. So we just gained two XP and cleared out two zombies. This also means we're going to trigger our final enemy quest. 
As we have defeated now three zombies, we are going to place this final enemy quest token on the board. We have to place it in a room without heroes and in an open space, but we'll have it face down. It's not going to be activated yet. What we have to do is get a hero adjacent to that token and then spend one movement to open it up, essentially opening up the lair and then out comes the lich. It seems to make sense to put the ancient crypt in this room right here. And then that way, at some point, Caldrack and Root can maybe open it. And then, you know, we have Sonya and Melinda. They're fast. So they've got lots of movement. Hopefully they can move into here and help out and take out that Lich. After Melinda has completed her turn, we are going to draft. And we have exactly 4 XP because we took out those two zombies to give us our third and fourth. And we're going to get the Iron Golem. That's a 7 attack, you guys. And it doesn't, even it doesn't account as a normal attack. How awesome is that? And any hero can play it. <laughs> what an amazing pet. We'll replace that card with Holy Flames. Yeah, no one can use that. We've now drafted our seventh card. And going forward, we get eight in our hand. And we can discard up to five cards every round. I think what we're going to do is discard these two cards, Rejuvenate and Kaith, because I'm thinking of having Caldrack go next. And we have a total of three cards in our hand right now, so we get to draw five more. One True Shot, Ensnare, oh, there we go, Divine Aura, Running Shot, and Shield Block. We then look at the enemy AI card. No enemies are exhausted, so we only have one enemy on the board, and it's a goblin. He's going to get plus one, and he is going to attack Kaldrak. We'll move the goblin from here right to here, exhausted, and it's going to attack for two against Kaldrak, but don't forget its ability. It gets to roll a die to determine how much additional damage it does. We're not going to take that lightly, though. We're going to play our shield block as a reaction, plus two armor. You can play this card after an attack is made against you. So we have four armor. Since the most this die will ever add is two, two plus the two of the goblin is four. That doesn't even touch Kaldrak. What a great tank. Oh, I love him. Let's discard this card and draw the next one. Wow. Okay. Actually, that's awesome because that means if I don't have another enemy out, I can reactivate the goblin and have him attack again. Oh, because I don't want to do two damage to two of my heroes. Well, I'm genuinely bummed that I did not keep Kaith in my hand. Because I am going to activate Sonya. That means Kaith, we're not going to be able to use this round. But I'll have one more round to use her. We have a total of five movement. We're going to move one and two. This should complete the guild quest because we now have three or more primordial icons in here. Yes! So we'll get five XP for that. But then we're also going to open this closed door, not a locked door. We're going to grab the tile with the Necromancer. And then we'll refresh with another level two. And we have, oh, dead fairies. Is that what they called? Those would be death fairies. Oh, and look at that, uh, that dodge. Four. <laughs> now their attack is zero, but their ability is as long as they don't move a ton, they attack for whatever movement point points they didn't use. Ouch. We'll place that room right here. And we're going to stop our movement so we can attack. Because we should be able to see through the door and hit that Necromancer. And I should flip the Necromancer so he's facing the door. Sonya's going to buff up her attack with plus two. So her attack is going to be a total of five. And don't forget, she can then use her full move points after doing this attack. Sonya's attacking for a total of five. Three plus two. We have three dodge, so we do two points of damage. Then we're going to take out the Necromancer with our Iron Golem. Our Iron Golem does seven damage, minus three. That does four points. Four plus two is six. The total health of that Necromancer, he can't even activate, which is awesome, because he starts healing himself with his life drain. That'll give us a total of five XP, and we have now definitely cleared out the XP to get to the tier three cards for upgrades for the next round. You don't grab those cards during these uh, individual rounds. You'll do it at the end of the cycle. So we'll still see just level two upgrades the rest of the cycle. Next cycle, the final one, we'll see one, we'll see those level three cards. We're then going to use four out of five of our XP to buy this enhanced spell, and this is going to be perfect for Kaldrak. He has both of these class icons. We're then going to discard 
Eolar and Ensnare, because I really think we're going to have um, Kaldrak go next. I know that's what I said last time, but we'll see. We get to then draw back up to eight cards. So one, two, three, four, yes, five, six, and then I have just a couple cards in my discard pile, uh, seven and eight. Oh, man, see, now we got Kaith. Ugh. We then are going to activate the enemy AI. First thing we can do is unexhaust that goblin. Because once again, that's our only enemy on the board right now. So we'll unexhaust him. And then I'm going to use this one. We're going to do plus two to his attack. And he's going to attack any hero. Because that way he can attack Kaldrak. So technically I need to flip this over and then flip it back over. He's going to do four points of damage. And then we have to roll that combat die. And Kaldrak will actually take some damage up to whatever we roll. So far, I am at two for two for rolling the die. I have gotten exactly what I needed. If I can roll a zero here, it's no damage. Ah, that's a one. Okay, well, we take one point of damage. We'll discard this card, draw the next one. Yeah, we're going to start losing cards in the row, which actually isn't terrible. Oh, I forgot to replace that card. So we'll grab this one, and we now have Ivory Chalice. Oh, cool. And anybody can use that. Next, what we're going to do is activate my favorite, Cauldrag. Let's have some fun. First thing that we're going to do is play Celestial Knight and Righteous Prayer. Celestial Knight requires us to discard two cards in hand. So we're going to discard Boots of Speed and Ensnare. We'll be able to pick those up next time. We only have two cards in our deck right now. So that's what I love about this game is how this works because as you go through, your deck gets smaller and so you can kind of count on more cards showing up, the ones that you need. And so you, the first, the first heroes you activate you'll have less options because there's so many cards that you're drawing from the deck. But at the end, your heroes should be getting the cards that you need because you'll be drawing all of your deck as long as you're doing your hand management right. We'll also add plus three to our defense. And lastly, we'll throw on top of that the Divine Aura. We have to discard Kaith. I'm not going to be able to use it. Bummer. But now any enemy that attacks us that he has one of these attack powers, it's negated. We have a total of five movement. Now, here's the first thing that we can do. Because there are no enemies in this room, and I'm assuming since the enemy is not activated here, it's not an enemy. If that's wrong, let me know. I'll put up a subtitle. But based on how I understand it, since there are no enemies in this room, we can spend one move point to reveal this challenge token. And it's a treasure chest. Sweet. So if it's a treasure chest, we leave it there. However, if that had been a trap we would get to know what it is and then depending upon if we wanted to spend more move points we can try and disarm it or we could just flip it back face down so we've used one movement movement two will be to move to here movement three will be moved to here and then movement four is we're going to open up this door i decided we were not quite ready for the boss yet so we'll grab these death fairies because i think i have an idea and then we'll reveal our first level three tile. We have a Minotaur and a Manticore. Ugh. We'll place our Death Fairy Room like so. And then we need another Archway Token. Perfect. And we have one more movement, you guys. So we should be able to move right here. Let's wail on one of these Death Fairies, huh? Our base attack for Kaldrak is four. Four plus one is five plus two is seven four dodge and three health we just took out a death fairy right there and that is three xp and then with our three xp and one that we had before we're going to actually grab the crimson moon axe from the discard pile so we have to spend four xp to buy this but heck yeah look at that card i really want sonya to use that next round <laughs> We only have two cards in our hand and five cards between our deck and our discard pile, so we'll just put all of them into our hand for Root's final turn. Why is it always Root at the end? I don't know. Now we'll activate the enemy AI. First thing is, we'll discard Ivory Chalice, and then we'll lose from the game, Bash. Yeah, I wasn't going to get that. And then we'll reveal two new cards. We've got the Tome of Knowledge and Paralyze. Now we're going to use this row to attack Kaldrak. Here's our Death Fairy. Our Death Fairy has a ranged attack, so she's not going to move. So normally she'd do six points of damage, plus two, so that's eight to Kaldrak. However, if you look at this card, it says the Death Fairy always moves the shortest distance needed to make an attack. This is one of these red attack abilities, and we have the Divine Aura. The Divine Aura states right here 
that we ignore spells or abilities that have this attack power icon. So I think this Death Fairy just gets to do two points of damage to us because we're just adding plus two from this row. Well, our shield is two plus two plus three plus two. So we're definitely blocking the Death Fairy's attack. Now, if you disagree, let me know, but I think that's right. Let's discard this enemy AI card and draw the next one. Final round, we're going to have Root go, and we are going to initiate the final enemy. <laughs> Let's see how this works. This could be a really bad idea. First thing we're going to do is give Root Boots of Speed. So Root has a total of nine movement. Root will spend one movement to move to here. He'll use his second movement to open the ancient crypt. Why would you open the ancient crypt, right? I mean, let's think about this. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh, well, he's going to do it. What we do is we will reveal this token. And wow, nine range attack, four movement, five armor, and nine health, and seven XP if we take him out. Now, this nine here is not what he's going to use to attack. That's what this deck is for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle this deck up a little bit. We immediately draw one of these, okay? And we get Raise the Fallen. Immediately place one zombie adjacent to Kaestrum. Kaestrum is plus three armor if there is at least one zombie adjacent to him. <laughs> wow. And then what he's going to do... He's going to attack with this. So if a zombie is adjacent to Kaestrum, remove his bottom wound token. Regardless, move in until in range within a line of sight of one target hero. How we're going to determine target heroes is we're going to use these random tokens here. So I'm going to have Root be number one, Sonya be number two, Kaldrak number three, and Melinda number four. And when it's the enemy activation, we'll normally activate or we'll activate the enemies normally as we did before using the cooperative and solo card to tell us which enemy to activate, and then he activates. And he's going to do whatever is on this card. And then at the end of that round, we'll discard this card and draw a new one, and he'll activate his defense immediately, probably spawning more zombies. So this is going to be hard. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Because right now, he's going to have eight armor. We'll place the Lich right here and the zombie right here. And I believe they both be facing Root. What we're going to do now is play Rejuvenate. We're going to spend one of our seven remaining movements. So we'll go down to six and we'll heal Kaldrak by one. So now we have six movements left. With our six movement, we'll use two to take a step back here. And now it's time to attack. We're going to play both Eolar and Lightning Strike. Now with Lightning Strike, this attack ignores the target's armor defense. That means that this Lich King has no armor because all of his defense is armor defense. So we're also going to play these two cards face down to add plus one to that. And we're going to do four damage to the Lich. <laughs> That's awesome. And then Eolar over here is just going to take out the zombie. That'll give us one XP, which we're going to use for our, en our, our uh, enemy card to activate. <laughs> it's going to help us so we don't die. So here's our one XP. We're not going to purchase anything. What we're going to do is simply leave our hand as is. We only have these three cards left in our deck. Now we're going to move to the enemy activation. We're going to get rid of the tile on the right. That would be this one with the manticore and the minotaur. So we'll get rid of that one. We'll draw our final tile, this level three tile. Could you have asked for anything more thematic? We have a fell wraith and two zombies. If I do open up that, that is perfect for this uh, dungeon itself because it's apparently an undead dungeon. So now we could do a this or this, and we're definitely going to lose one XP. So we'll flip this face down so that way I don't have to activate another enemy. But now we're going to have to activate the boss. We look here first, it says, if a zombie is adjacent to Kelstrom, it's not. We took it out. So then regardless, move until in range and within line of sight of one target hero. So we're going to take our hero tokens here and mess them up. We'll then give them a good shuffle up like so. We don't know which one is which. And we'll reveal this one. Oh my gosh. This means that Root won't die. <laughs> I was a little worried Root was going to die. Number three is Kaldrak. 
I forgot to explain that the final enemy can attack any hero within two tiles. So all heroes were potential uh, attack targets. That's why I used all four of these tokens. Wow, that was lucky. So now here's the thing. Caldrack has for defense two, plus three is five, plus two is seven, plus two on his card for nine. And this Lich does nine damage. <laughs> Caldrack soaked it. See I love Caldrack. I love those tanks. Before attacking, though, the Lich would need to take one step right here so he's not adjacent to Caldrack but still has a line of sight. At the end of the enemy activation, we will discard this card and draw a new one. And whatever the defense is, that's what's going to happen. Immediately place one zombie adjacent to Kilstrom. Kilstrom is plus three. Oh, we've already seen that. But we're going to spawn another zombie. We'll place that zombie right here. Whew. Finally, we will discard this card and our new solo AI. Oh my gosh, we keep getting those at the perfect time. All enemies will be unexhausted, so it won't even matter. We have two exhausted enemies that we'll have to unexhaust. Perfect. And then what do you say we clean up this mess of cards and we'll draw our hand up to eight. We have three right now, so we'll get to draw five cards. Here we have our four heroes ready. I have a sinking feeling one of them might get killed next round. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody other than Coldrack can soak nine points of damage without totally getting killed. So it'll be interesting to see what we can do. Let's draw five more cards. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's nice. And five. Oh, I don't know. It's not obvious which one we're going to do first. Okay, that's it for today. We have our four heroes ready to take on that Lich. If we beat the Lich, we win the game, which is awesome. I love that. If we do win the game, then we can count up our points. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you in the final episode.